Stargirl, episode three of the second season. Now, I've been loving everything this show has been doing. I love the first season, the first two episodes of this show in this season. Amazing. But this episode really was my favorite so far. I, I don't know of the entire show, but I think I had a smile on my face more throughout this episode than I have with any of them in a long time. I smile throughout most of these things, but this was just so perfect. And I think it perfectly executes this idea that I've been saying for a long time. And that is when you lean into the right side of campiness, you can perfectly nail it on the head. You know, Doom Patrol does it. Superman and Lois does it. When you go for those angles, they can work. And I think this really shows it. So this episode, it opens up. We see that Pat's kind of like left alone the day the JSA dies. But who comes in to talk to him is Johnny Thunder. And basically Johnny Thunder was benched until he wasn't. And we just see like Johnny Thunder's the kind of guy that never really gets to do much. But the day he does is also the day that he dies. And the pen goes unused until randomly Mike is delivering the mail, the newspaper one day, the bullies find him, his family's ignoring him, he feels beaten up, but he decides he's going to take some more paper outs, and then he finds this random pen in Courtney's room because he needs to write something down, and then all of a sudden the pen comes to life. Now, I didn't see who the, the like, actor was. Is it Jim Gaffigan? I believe I saw, read somewhere, something that Jim Gaffigan was Thunderbolt, but... This is perfect, like just showing us, okay, first off, Mike is probably the unsung hero of this show. He grounds it, he makes it believable. I love Mike, he's probably one of my favorite characters in this show, much like Kyle and Superman and Lois, I think Mike just represents the perfect nature of what a character would act in this show around all these heroes. I love it. And then you got Thunderbolt in here, literally just Thunderbolt, he is Thunderbolt, he is funny he's insane it makes no sense it looks like thunderbolt he's just dramatic and over the top and we're setting up that maybe mike's going to become a member of the jsa on his full self now and we're just like is that going to be something that happens probably it's very cool so he just tests it out he's like can i have some water some water pours on him some monkey's paw stuff going on here it is very funny and very cool and he, i love just the sequence before like courtney finds him and he's just seeing the bullies talking to like this little kid taking her girl scout cookies it's like i wish they would stop and then a million just stop signs come falling from the sky to stop these guys dead in their tracks that is just funny and it's cool and it's enjoyable and it just makes you smile because it's thunderbolt go weird with it it's awesome it looks great Courtney finds him and eventually we just go all right Mike has to know a few things going on here which leads to a really powerful moment I really genuinely liked this moment when Pat is talking to the Thunderbolt and so it's the two of them alone and it's just like look I, I went to Johnny because he was alone and he needed people and his last wish was I find someone just like him and it's Pat realizing that everything he's been through since moving to Blue Valley has put his son in a position where he's alone and doesn't feel happy, doesn't feel like he's a part of the team or a part of anything. And he's like, well, maybe I should let my son be a part of this world. It's a nice moment outside, too, when Pat's having that conversation and we see Mike and Courtney talk. He's like, I want to do this with my sister. We could be like a brother-sister superhero team on the JSA. Like, he is so ready to do this, so committed to being a part of this team in this life. I love Mike for that. Like, he's just perfectly that character. It's really good to see it. And you're like, okay, I guess we're going to, we have to figure out the perfect wish the perfect wish we're going to spend a montage writing stuff on a whiteboard what is the perfect thing to ask thunderbolt to find where the shade is and we do realize that it's the shade we're fully committing to this we get a scene earlier on where barbara is in like this old collection of all the wizard stuff and the shade is looking for this one piece again something i really enjoy when you're using a character like the shade his power is shadows play with the camera work and the shadow and the lighting because every time you see the shade, he is perfectly lit, just like in this dark, weird area. And when he's in this scene with Barbara, all you see is his eyes. Like, you just see, like, the face of him hidden. The, the rest of him's hidden in the shadows, and it looks really good. So, we realize he's trying to find something in a small box. I think it's pretty safe to say at this point in the story, we do get it confirmed later that he is searching for the black diamond that houses Eclipso. But Cindy already has it. So we are kind of setting up the shade isn't really a part of the ISA stuff. He kind of just like wants to, I'm going to assume, 
control Eclipso to do things that way. Now we'll have to wait and see how that comes to be, but that's pretty much where we're at right now with that, and it's kind of cool to see that. So our team, they ask the perfect question to Thunderbolt. They figure out that he's at the wizard's old house and they go there and have a really cool moment. This was just, I don't know why this just invoked a bunch of like Doom Patrol for me because just a bunch of people in costumes sitting at a fancy dinner table. I love this scene. All these kids ready to attack this guy that we learned to kill Dr. Midnight. But they kind of say, we, see, we, we think he killed Dr. Midnight. The shade kind of like suggests... Oh, you don't know what you're talking about, which might lead me to believe. It might lead me to believe maybe he's telling the truth and it was Eclipso that killed Dr. Midnight. We, I can't confirm it. I don't know, but I'm just like, maybe this guy hasn't been lying throughout any of it. So our team sits down. Mike, of course, has to stay behind. That was the deal he made of his dad, but he's so eager to be a part of this and help everything that he bursts into the room and he's ready to send Thunderbolt to attack the shade, but it doesn't work. Everyone kind of gets knocked down by these shadowy figures and the, the shape and the shade escapes. It's a good moment. It just shows you maybe Mike isn't cut out for this because he's just jumping the gun a little too much in these certain areas that you don't really understand things. And that leads us to another really strong moment in here. Like, I love all the stuff with Thunder and seeing Johnny Thunder at the beginning. But the kind of heart of this episode and the heart of this season is kind of Yolanda. Because she's just struggling with the idea of, like, fighting again because she doesn't want to have to kill a person. Like, the way she killed Brainwave, she doesn't want to have to do that again. And when we see at the end of this moment that she's standing outside of Mike and she's asking, like, how does it feel knowing you literally killed someone? And he's like, well, I haven't, I guess I haven't really thought about it because it was kind of a fluke. I just kind of randomly drove and then icicle and then dead. Which is just, again, like, Mike is not a bad guy, but he's not a superhero. He's not there yet, and you can't help but feel bad for him because this is all he wants. He sees this world around him. Literally every person he knows is doing this, and even more so on that later. But I'm just like, this is really strong, really good stuff. And the Shade does manage to escape, and we're thinking to ourselves, what is his diabolical plan going to be? We know he's after the Eclipto Diamond. What is he up to? Which leads to a nice moment where we get the entire Dubin and Whitmore family together. And then we see like, you know, Courtney's on the side of Mike. She's really trying to help him out here. And Brecht did really great this episode. I think she, this is where I just went, oh yeah, she found it. She really just got back into the rhythm of things this season. She is just bubbly and happy, but willing to go to those places. And it worked really well. And she's willing to help Mike. She's in support of this guy, this kid, her brother, helping them in this thing. But obviously... He can't do it. And he just randomly says, I wish the pen would find somebody better. And the pen leaves him. Now the family's like, well, where the hell's the pen? <laughs> Which we do see where the pen goes and something that they've been teasing since the first season. It goes to Jakeem. We, we knew it was coming. We all knew it was going to happen. One of the things I really like too, if you look at this comparatively, Mike is wearing the same color palette as Johnny Thunder. When Johnny Thunder dies, he's wearing the same greens and reds. And then it goes to Jakeem, and he's wearing yellow, which is a kind of a classic color for Jakeem, I believe. Like, he's worn those kind of colors before. And you just see, like, just Jakeem feels pretty accurate to the, the Jakeem I know. So I'm like, yep, you got me. I'm on board for that. I can't wait to see what's going to happen there. I love it. I'm excited to see where that storyline goes. I know it's going to be cool. I just know it's going to be cool. It's very exciting. I, I love Jakeem. I love Mike. I can't wait to see how that friendship... I guarantee we're going to get like a B plot of an episode where it's Jakeem and Mike figuring out how to use the Thunderbolt. And maybe it's going to be like a co-op thing where the two of them use it together. Maybe behind Pat's back. Very exciting to see that. But Barb does reveal that what the Shade was looking for. And it's just kind of like, well, it's the Eclipso Diamond. What's coming from it? We'll have to wait and see. We see that he is searching. The Shade is searching for this diamond. He doesn't know where it is. Somebody has it. We know who has it. But the Shade doesn't. And it's just kind of setting up like, okay, we kind of teased that, you know, the ISA was these big bad guys. There's even dangerous things out there that are bigger than the ISA. The Shade is one of them. The powers that he used looked really good. Like that was a great use of like shadow effects and everything when he was attacking the people. I liked it a lot. We also kind of end things with a nice moment between Rick and Beth, which is something I've... They teased a little bit of these two having some connection, which I like. And you see Rick's like, hey, talk to me like I'm I'm Chuck. Like, I'm willing... I want to sit here and talk to you, so tell me what's up. 
and he, she kind of reveals that her parents might be divorcing and he's like well I would talk to them about the situation I know if I had the opportunity I'd love to talk to my parents about anything nice moment absolutely fun and then we get the reveal again that the Chuck the goggles wake up they're like Eclipso's here watch out so Eclipso's coming end of the season <laughs> maybe I'm gonna it's mid-season finale maybe I don't know I hope it's not the end of the season. We'll probably see Eclipso in full soon. I'm going to say. But a cool way to end the episode. Again, this is my stuff. If you're going to go do like your campy JSA stuff, give me Thunderbolt. Just go all out for it. Give me like this weird comedian guy voicing this lightning bolt who's just screaming and talking about like how cool he is and how he accidentally killed an old man with how weird he looks. That's awesome. It was so good. This was amazing. It gave Mike so much to do, which is was an incredible episode that just built out its lore in a way that we all expected. We didn't see Jade in it, so she's obviously doing something else now. I really like this. This was such a good episode. It's straight up what I wanted to see when we did Lightning Bolts and we did Thunderbolt and all that crap. It was amazing. It was amazing. I cannot wait to see what comes next from this show, but this episode was just really good. Fantastic even. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I'm super happy with the way we got Thunderbolt portrayed, the shade portrayed, everybody's looking great. What a fun episode. Luke Wilson again, amazing. Amazing, just amazing. So that is my review of Stargirl Season 2, Episode 3. Now, thank you guys for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, and I will catch you in the next one. Have fun, stay safe, good luck.